Hey guys, let's talk about file transferring. So today is another shorty video, so I'm gonna go through this very quickly. So every so often I try to look at what people are searching for on YouTube and then I make a video about that. And that's what I'm doing today. So I hope you guys find this useful. And if not, just know that the fact that people are searching how to send Pro Tools sessions is why I'm making this video. Okay, so let's get into it. So some of us have access to online cloud storage and that makes sending large files and file folders to collaborators or clients very easy. So for example, I have an unlimited Google Drive account through the college where I teach. So if you have access to something like that and sharing your uploads on your cloud service with collaborators or clients works for you, then that's awesome. But some people don't have access to that kind of service and I personally choose not to share my Google Drive backups with clients and collaborators. Instead, I use the service that I'll show you guys in a second here. But basically, I like to use my Google Drive as a second backup for my files. So I back up all my work to a hard drive that lives on my desk, and it never moves. And then I also back up everything to Google Drive. Google Drive can make it a pain to download a large folder like a Pro Tools session, so it splits it into a bunch of folders sometimes, and it makes it a pain to then kind of stitch your folder back together. So it's not ideal for sharing large folders with clients for that reason. But I like having a second backup and I like being able to access my files from anywhere if I'm in a pinch. I also choose not to use my cloud service, so Google Drive, to share files with clients because I like having backups that no one else can touch and accidentally mess up. And I also like being able to reorganize, move, or sometimes even delete files without feeling the need to notify people that are sharing that file with me. So for example, sometimes I send multiple rough mixes to a client and I don't feel the need to keep all of those rough mixes on my cloud backup. And I would especially run into this issue when I was using my personal Google Drive to share files with clients. So that has a very limited storage space and I'm basically at capacity for it. So I would wanna delete something to make room on my personal Google Drive and I would have to contact that client first to make sure that they have the file downloaded and that they don't need access to it on my Google Drive anymore. And that's a huge pain, especially if it's been a while since you spoke to that client about that project. So what I use now to share files is FileMail.com. FileMail.com is free and it allows me to easily send large folders and files. So for example, I can send a large Pro Tools session folder and it doesn't require that I personally host the files on any of my accounts on a server somewhere. So that's most of why I like it. It also notifies me when people download the files that I send to them. So I know when they've gotten access to those files. And I also like how it doesn't require that I have an account with their site. So let me just show you how it works. So you just go to filemail.com. And by the way, this video is not sponsored at all. They don't even know that I'm making this video. I just use their service all the time. So that's that. So you can see here that you can log in or sign up. I haven't even done that yet. You do not need an account with them to actually use their service, just so you know. But basically I just go to filemail.com and then I scroll down here to their form and I just entered the to email. So I'll just put my email for the to and the from here just because it's an example for you guys, right? So Cato at CatoNoise.com and then I go from email. So this is always my actual email here, Cato at CatoNoise.com. This will be whoever the client is or whoever I'm sending this to, right? That's pretty obvious. And then I'll do a subject and a message just like an email, right? So I'll go like rough mix, whatever, whatever. And then I'll put like the date, right? So, geez, what's today? So like November 4th, 2019 type of thing. And then I'll be like, hi, here's the rough mix. Hope you like it. Done. Oh, no. And then I'll put from Kata, right? And like what I put here depends on who the client is and what the rapport is that I have with them, right? That makes sense. But yeah, once you have your message and your subject line and then your email is entered in here. And you can send this to multiple people too. So you can be like Kato2 at katanoise.com. So if you have multiple people that are involved in the project, you can send it to multiple people at once. And then you can either click on add files or add folder here. I'm gonna click on add folder here just cause I wanna show you guys that feature of this. So the reason why I use file mail instead of for example, like we transfer or something like that is cause it can send bigger files and it can also send whole folders. So I don't have to actually zip the folder ahead of time to send it. I can just send the whole folder as is. And I kind of like that. So I'm just gonna go to my desktop and pick this YouTube example session. I'm just gonna hit upload. So now in this bottom section here, it populates with what you're gonna actually send when you hit send. So it's showing my whole folder here. So I can add files. 
Just add my wave cache. I don't know why anyone would do that, but I'm just showing you guys this as an example. And that's it. That's all I usually do before hitting send. But just so you guys know, there's also this field here where I believe you can just drag and drop things in. And then you can also send as just a link. So it's like a URL that you can then share with whoever you want to share with. But if you do the normal send, it generates a URL as well. So I just hit send. And then the thing about file mail is since they're using their servers instead of your servers, they will erase your file after a period of time. So the default is one week. You can have it for less before they wipe it clean and you can have it for more. If you have it for more then I think you have to use their paid service. So I just usually leave it at a week and that's it. And then I leave notify me when files are downloaded checked off. I think if you wanna protect it with a password, that's also part of their paid service. So I don't usually do that, but it is an option that you have if you want to do their paid service. So then I just hit send and it just takes a little bit to upload here. It's usually pretty quick. And that's it. Then it does a little beepy thing. I think you guys might have been able to hear it. And then you know that your files are transferred. And then what I usually do here is I copy this URL and then I will then email the client and be like, hey, I just sent it to you through FileMail. Keep an eye out for an email from FileMail.com. And just in case you don't find that auto-generated email, here's the URL for you to access your file. Because then anyway, because with this URL, I'm gonna hit close here. I'm just gonna open a new tab and then hit paste. So with this URL, Anyone that's involved in the project can now access your file. So here's my file. So this is what it looks like for the other person, for the person that's receiving the file. So it has my little message. It says who it's from. That's me. Again, I didn't even have to use an account to do this, which is pretty cool. And then they just hit download all files and they're good to go. And once they download the files, I do get notified. So I do like that. I like knowing when someone's downloaded the files. I like knowing that people downloaded the files. So sometimes if it's getting close to the one week mark and the person hasn't downloaded the files at all, I'll then remind them, hey, I used filemail.com to send you that file and that link's going to expire within, you know, however many days it is or whatever it is. And so I'll just remind them to go download the file before it gets erased. But I do, if I send something this way, I do make sure that I have a backup of it. So if they need me to resend it, that that is possible. But yeah, that's it. That's filemail.com. That's how I send large files, large folders. And I like these guys because at least back when I looked into it, when I started using them, I could send larger files for free using them than I could using the competition. For example, stuff like WeTransfer, stuff like that. And I like being able to send a whole folder without having to zip it ahead of time. It's just a little convenient. I don't know. It doesn't matter a whole bunch, but I like that. And I like that it's free and you don't have to have an account to use it. So again, this is not a sponsored video. I just wanted to show you guys how I send Pro Tools sessions and other large files. I feel like using the service really helps me keep those cloud backups that I have really organized and clean since, you know, whenever I send a file to a client, I then don't have to host it somewhere on one of my servers on one of my accounts, right? So that's how it works. Now, Avid also has a cloud collaboration service for Pro Tools, but I think that's a topic for another video. And honestly, I'm not sure if it's a video I'll ever make either because their cloud collaboration plans cost a good amount of money to solve a problem that I don't feel like I'm really suffering from. Basically, filemail.com is working just fine for me for now. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this info useful. And as always, if you like this video, please check out my other videos or do all those things that people on YouTube love. So like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you want to support my channel more directly, I do have a Patreon at patreon.com slash noise and patrons do get access to additional content. And that's about it. I come out with new videos every Wednesday and thank you for watching. Mm-hmm. <laughs>